friends, it's Amanda here from Fun Hands-On Learning. In today's video, I'm going to show you all of the most recent hands-on learning activities that I have created to do with my kindergarten slash first grade students. And these activities I've created in the last few months, we've done some of them, we haven't done others. Um, but if you are interested, they are activities that work on literacy skills and math skills. And if you are new to my channel, my name is Amanda. I am a mom of eight children. I'm a homeschool mom. I'm a former elementary school teacher. And on my channel, I love to share videos like this, sharing with you hands-on learning experiences that I have with my children and that you can have with your kids too. So if this interests you, just keep on watching. All the links will be in the description box below if you're looking to do these activities with your kids too. All right, let's go. Okay, this math activity is discriminating between even and odd numbers. It's just called even or odd. So it has a dog theme to it. There are actually two skills or two processes that the children are going to go through with this activity. So first they're going to use these dog bone cards and they're going to pick a number. These are numbers uh, through the teens and they're gonna pick a number. So I'm gonna pick 15. And then they're going to find the matching number card. So the first skill that they're gonna be learning is being able to count to that number, obviously, and finding it in a 10 frame. And hopefully children um, are kind of used to seeing numbers on a 10 frame so they can quickly see three groups of five. Um, that would also be a good way to get them thinking in terms of multiplication for later on when they're doing harder skills. Um, but for today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through our cards and we're gonna try to find 15. Okay, here it is, 15. All right, the last step is to go ahead and place the cards in either even or odd. Well, 15 we know is an odd number because if I count by twos, I'm gonna have one left over and I can kind of use this 10 frame to help me and I can count by twos. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, and I still have one left over. I can't go to um, 16. And so I know that this is an odd number and I'm gonna place it into the odds. All right, you can start your students out with the easier cards. Like let's say they just start out with, you know, one or two or four easy numbers originally so that they can tell if it's an even or odd number. So for example, here I have the number four. Can I split up the number four evenly into groups of two so I can count two and then two more would be four? Do I have any left over? No, so this is an even number and we're going to place it and feed it to our even dog. There you have it, even and odd dogs. I hope you enjoy this activity with your students. This activity is ice fishing for digraphs. It comes with a mat that looks like this. It comes with these digraph cards. It comes with word cards. And it comes with picture cards. So, the first step is students will pick a digraph card. Let's work on our CH digraph. Ch, ch. They will place the card on the mat. Now we will look for pictures that begin with that digraph. We are going to place the pictures in the fishing hole. So we have chimney, chair, chips, and chicken. Once the students have found all of the digraph fish, then they are going to find the words so that they can read the matching words. So I'm going to look on here and find chips, chimney, chair, and chicken. Students will read the words and they will match them up. Now we 
can go on to another one. And that is fishing for digraphs activity. die so you have the students roll their die okay what do I get all right I got a three now the next step is to double the number and add it so since I got a three I would add three plus three then you want to look in your cards and find the problem the students can then see and find their problem so they know what they're doing then we're adding three plus three they add that together and then they cover up their answer. So three plus three equals six. So I'm going to use these, these are snap cubes, and I'm gonna use these to cover up my answer. Now, if you have students who are still struggling with their addition, you can use something like these snap cubes to help them add it. So they would just take, you know, obviously three snap cubes and they could just put it out right and then three more snap cubes okay and then they can add it up that way three plus three makes six and cover up my number now I'm working with students who are able to add without doing that and so I would just have them add it in their head and cover up their answer but um, that is another option if you are working with struggling students. Okay, so then they will just continue on. I'm going to roll it again. I got another three, so three plus three equals six. I don't see another six on my mat, so we're going to roll again. All right, this time I rolled a five, so I'm going to find five plus five. Five plus five equals ten, and I'm going to cover up a ten. I'm going to cover up this one. Now, um, you can see there's another 10 on my mat, so I would have to roll until I got another 5 plus 5 in order to cover that one up. What you want the students to do is continue to roll until they have covered up all their answers. They have, once they cover up all their answers, they will have done all of the problems plus some of the problems twice. Okay, so then um, once that mat is complete, if you still want them to practice some more, you could, oop, you could uh, have them do the next mat. And then there's another one as well. Or if you're working with, say, a small group of students, you could give them different mats. Uh, and that would be fun too. Or if you have students working in groups themselves, then they could have different mats and be playing um, different ones. And then they could rotate however you wanted to do it. This activity is a sentence unscramble. First, the students choose a sentence. So let's choose this one. They're going to lay out the cards and make a sentence. My dog likes to hug. Then they are going to find the matching sentence strip that has the same picture on it. Now we are going to write our sentence using a dry erase marker in the spaces. After the students have written the sentence, the last part is to find the correct end mark. My dog likes to hug. It's going to end with a period. Now we're finished and we can unscramble another sentence. There you have it, sentence unscramble. Hope your students enjoy.
Well, thank you so much for watching guys and we will see you in the next video. Happy learning. Bye.